Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a really highly requested video. This is a tote bag comparison video. Now as you'll probably know I have a full time job and for day to day for the office my bag of choice is definitely a tote bag. I just feel like it's really practical, fits everything that I need including my lunch because I do like to take that with me to the office from home. So I've got three tote bags here which I think are all really reasonably priced, they're all leather and they're all really high quality as well and I wanted to talk through the pros and cons of each and also just talk a little bit about the wear and tear and how much can fit inside. They're all kind of about the same price point and about the same size but there are a few subtle differences which I think will either make or break whether you truly love the bag. It's all really down to personal choice. I actually love all three of them equally. I don't know if I could necessarily pick a favourite. Before I jump into the video, I will also quickly take this opportunity to apologize for the lighting. I'm going to make sure that the bags show up as true to color as possible for this video, but please forgive the fact that it might fade in and out in terms of how bright the video is. I do really love and have been enjoying using all three of these bags, so I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts with you guys. So let's start with the first bag, and I think I'm going to talk about the Linear Soft Tote, just because this is the one that I've had the longest. So I went for this bag in Chestnut, which is a really beautiful red toned brown and it retails for $359 US and the bag is a vegetable tanned leather, which if you would like to know a little bit more about the process, Linear do have a whole uh, page on their website dedicated to talking about it and it is quite a thick kind of sturdy leather um, It's the stitching is all really nice on mine none of the stitching has actually uh, become unraveled and then it also has sort of a solid base to the bag too. Inside of the bag it is fully lined with cotton and it's sort of a beige cotton fabric and I don't know if you can see this but there's also a little pocket here where you can put some of your essentials like your cell phone or your um, card wallet or something like that and the bag also has a magnetic closure which just snaps shut. So that is the Linear Soft Tote bag. Now of all of the bags, I would probably say that this is the most structured. It has really structured handles as well. I don't find that they slip off my arm. I do tend to wear it obviously over my shoulder a lot. I just find that that's the most comfortable. However, it is the smallest of the bags. It's also the only bag that has any kind of security or any sort of closure to it at all, which I really do like. It's not something that I think is 100% necessary. I've never been pickpocketed or anything like that, but if you are looking for something that will give you that additional sense of security, then this is probably the one to go for. Now this fits a really decent amount of stuff in it. I can put my laptop in here in addition to a book, a little bag to carry things to and from work, my lunch, also uh, all of my kind of essentials like lip gloss, uh, perfume and I can also fit a scarf in here too. So it's very roomy. Uh, you are going to obviously lose stuff because there isn't really too many inner compartments or any pockets like that aside from the little pouch on the side. However, that's really the case for all three of these tote bags. They're kind of carry all totes that you throw everything and the kitchen sink into. So this has held up really well. It hasn't really scratched or marked up very much at all. I haven't babied any of these bags at all. I've had this for I think over a year now and I've used it practically every single day aside from when I've been wearing these other two bags to the office and I have to say I think it's performed really well and it's also worn really well too. So it has a really nice shoulder drop to it. And I think that the leather, while it has softened up, it still has retained a lot of its integrity. It hasn't lost too much of its structure, which I really like. Um, it also stands up straight as well. There's a little bit of wear on the corners, on the edges, which is from when I've been putting it down, I assume. But I think that's kind of natural and sort of what I would expect from the bag. I like that both sides of the bag look exactly the same as well. There's no branding to it or anything like that. So you can wear it either way. It doesn't matter. Just whichever side feels more comfortable to you. Now, I'd say probably the only con is that this is the smallest bag of the three. I really like it. It does have that cotton interior which does mark up. I have no idea how to clean this to be completely honest. You probably just have to spot clean it but you can see um, I've got some marks in here. Um, I think it's from a lipstick. Oh, just in there, down there. There we go. 
which is I believe from a lipstick but yeah otherwise this is a really beautiful bag I think this is the most expensive of the three as well so something to keep in mind but I think it kind of holds up to its luxury counterparts for sure the second bag that I wanted to talk about is the Eveline Day Market Tote and I have this in the light tote and this is honestly the most beautiful color. It's sort of got a slight blush hue to it. I just think it's absolutely stunning and it's one of those things that I've been really enjoying wearing because it adds a little bit more color to my outfits, a little bit more vibrancy. It kind of takes away the dull of winter in my opinion but just a really stunning bag. So this one is probably the largest of the three. Um, again, it's just very kind of simple. You can see that there's a pocket um, on the back and I will kind of talk about that soon. It has a solid base. This one has a much more solid base than the other two bags, which is really great if you take your lunch to work and you want to make sure that it's going to be secure and not shift around in your bag. The interior of the bag is a raw leather, so very light. Um, it hasn't actually marked on anything that I've put in here, which is really great because I have had experiences with other brands in the past and it just has one really large pocket at the back. The pocket on this is slightly bigger than the pocket on the linear tote, which I like because it means I can fit a lot more of my things in there. I've got a little, um, I've got two card wallets, plus I've also got my key case and they don't really fit very well in the linear tote bag. Uh, these, this bag has quite flat straps and then it just has a little bit of branding here on the front. Uh, which I will do a close up because I don't know if you're going to be able to see it from that far away. Now, this bag is really comfortable to wear and again, I love the fact that it fits everything that I need in it. However, I have found because the straps are quite kind of flat and they're very thick that they don't kind of bend super easily so they can be a little bit stiff on the shoulder. I do imagine that once you've had this for over a year, it will soften up. I have noticed that the bag has lost quite a lot of its structure in the three weeks that I used it. I used it every single day and I, like I said before, I don't really baby my bags at all. So it has lost a bit of its structure and I think it will probably go quite floppy after you've had it for a while, which I think is just down to the nature of the leather. So if that's something that you like, then this will probably be a great one for you. Now, as I mentioned on the back, you can see here, See, it's going quite floppy. It doesn't really stand up like the linear tote bag does. So as you can see on the back here, this is where the interior pocket is. And the leather has sort of softened and sagged a little bit, which I don't particularly love. I kind of wish that it hadn't done that, but you can kind of see that the as the leather is softened, it's also stretched out a little bit, probably to hold the capacity of those essential items, which I reach for every single day. Uh, the stitching on this and everything is immaculate. The glazing on the bag is absolutely perfect. And I haven't really noticed any kind of wear to the bag otherwise. I have got a teensy weensy scratch here, which I suspect was from when I was carrying about a million things at the train station and I snagged it on something, but I don't really think it's necessarily very obvious. So this is a really great tote bag if you really need to carry a lot and you want something that is going to be really perfect for that. Again, because it is just one big pocket, you are probably going to lose a couple of your things in the process, but if you've got little pouches inside, I do kind of think that that's a really great way to sort of separate your belongings. Um, one thing that I do think is probably worth noting with this is because it is a smooth kind of calf skin leather, it will be prone to scratching. So you will have to be a little bit kind of conscious of that so that you don't scratch it up against anything like I did because it will mark up eventually over time. Um, you may have seen when I showed you the interior before that there is a little leather panel on the inside, which again, just helps to kind of create that really sturdy base at the bottom of the bag. So that is the Eveline Day Market Tote. Again, this is a really beautiful leather tote bag, another really great choice. And this one is less than half the price of the linear tote bag. Then the final bag that I wanted to talk about is the Kuyana Structured Tote Bag. Now this is actually my second bag from Kuyana. 
Uh, and the first bag that I ever got from them was their classic tote bag. I had it in the tan leather and it has a raw leather interior. And I found that it actually stained a couple of clothing items that I put inside because the uh, leather rubbed onto those things and I couldn't actually get the marks out. So do keep that in mind if you plan on going for just the classic version. But so this is the structured version which is fully lined. It's a black pebbled leather with a blush lining which is really beautiful in my opinion i just think it's really lovely it the reason why i went for this bag is because it has more structure than the classic style and that's something that i really like for a work tote i think that if it's got a little bit more structure it looks a little bit more professional a little bit more elegant and it's going to be completely timeless as well and i find that this is the kind of thing that of course can transition really easily from work to play so this retails for 195 US dollars. So this is kind of um, a step up from the Everlane one, but not quite as expensive or not quite as much of an investment as the Linear tote bag. And this is around about the same size as the Everlane tote bag, actually. It is quite big. I didn't really realize it. I think because of the shape of it, it is the size is a bit unassuming. So it has the straps which are stitched on on the exterior, very similar to the Everlane one. And then inside it has a pocket, which, oh, how am I gonna show you this? This is really hard to show you guys. Um, it has a pocket on the inside. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, which actually zips up. And then it has a smaller pouch in front of the zip up pocket. Now, I really like this because I like to be able to keep those essential items like my keys and my coin purse really secure. So I like the fact that I can put them in here and zip it up. However, the pocket is raw, unlined leather. So I have noticed on my bright red Charlotte Olympia card case that it has actually gotten a little bit of color transfer to it. I'm sure it's something that I can easily wipe off, but definitely worth noting, if you've got a light colored purse, do not put it inside this pocket because it will mark up. Then it also has these little ties here. And what you can do with the ties is make the bag have a slightly different shape to it. So if you tie it together, it pulls in the sides of the bag and kind of creates a sort of almost like buckety shape. Personally, I don't really like this. I don't like the way that it makes the bag look. It's not really what I'm going for. However, I do think that it's really great that you kind of get two different bag styles in one. So definitely handy. And I think that kind of adds to the security of the bag because as with the Evelyn tote, it's otherwise just an open, one open pocket, really. So yeah, that's the bag. It doesn't have a um, structured bottom like the other two do. It does have a seam running down the, the bottom and of course down the sides as well, which I think is what helps to make it a little bit more structured than just a plain leather floppy tote bag. Now, I have found that this has worn really well. I think that that's just kind of the nature of having a bag that's in a pebbled leather. It hides scratches really easily. There's no wear on the corners or anything like that, which I wouldn't really expect after three weeks of wear anyway. I have noticed that there are some slight marks on the inside of the bag. I don't know how you're gonna be able to see them here just from my belongings going in there, but otherwise there's no actual scratches or anything like that inside so again this is just a really nice easy option and i think if you go for a classic black then it's going to go with absolutely everything um with this particular bag there's also an interior bag organizer that you can get which i think will help to give the bag additional structure but it'll also help you to kind of keep all of your belongings organized and in check as well so i will be sure to link that in the description box below in case you want to go and check that out as well I've been thinking about picking it up to add into mine just as I think it would be a great little accessory to have. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to show you guys what each of these bags look like on me on my frame. I am 5 foot 8 or 172 centimeters for reference. Um, the, out of all the bags, the linear tote bag is obviously the smallest and the Everlane one is probably the largest and I think Part of the reason why it looks so large is because it has a lot more structure than the Kuyana tote, even though the two of them are quite similar in terms of size. All three bags have quite a decent shoulder strap drop, which to me is really important. I want to be able to fit the bag over my coats. 
I think probably the one that is the most snug is the Lignito. It is slightly shorter than the Kuyana and Eveline tote bag handles. So worth keeping in mind, however, I think it probably makes it a little bit more susceptible a little bit easier if you would like to pop it in the crook of your arm if that's the way you prefer to hold it or if you're holding it in your hand you know that the bag's not going to scrape up against the ground. Now if I had to rank these bags I would probably put the Kuyana tote bag in first place. This is hugely in part to the fact that I've actually had one of their bags before, I used it for three years and I know that it's going to be a bag that I'm still going to be reaching for in years from now. I also think that the black colour is really classic and um, this comes down to the colour choice uh, but I just think it's really classic and something that I know will go with every single one of my outfits and I really love how this works for the weekend as well. I think it's really great value for money too and I like the fact that you can actually personalize these bags if you would like. All the information is on the website. In second place, I would put the Lignette Soft Tote Bag. Now, this bag is impeccably made and I'm just so impressed with how it's worn over the last year. I really love the color, however, I'd say it's probably not as versatile as black, um, but I do think it's really beautiful and I think the fact that it's structured makes it look a little bit more professional for the office. It is a slightly smaller size, but again, it's just really beautiful and that cotton canvas lining, I think, elevates it up a notch. It is extremely good value for money and I think that the um, quality materials really speak for themselves. Which means that in last place, I have to put the Eveline Day Market Tote. Now, I would still absolutely 100% recommend this bag to you if it's one that you're looking at buying. Not only is it the most affordable of the three options here, but there are also some really gorgeous color options on the website. I think that the um, Cognac Saddle Brown that they have is a really versatile color for every single day. The Vibrant Red is really beautiful too, especially for summertime. However, I think that it doesn't really stack up to the other two in part probably because of the leather that was used. I am definitely much more drawn to pebbled leather when it comes to my everyday work bag just because it hides so many sins. It is just so much more durable whereas I know with a calf leather if you get a little scratch or the paint chips, the leather paint chips at all, um, is going to be much more noticeable. So that's probably why I would put this one in third place but I still really like it and again I think it's definitely worth that $150 price tag. You're getting a lot of value for that money for sure. So that concludes this comparison and review of the three tote bags. I hope that you guys found this video helpful particularly if you are in the market for a new tote bag for the office yourself. As I said at the beginning of this video I absolutely love every single one of these bags. I love all three equally and Honestly, I would get all three again in a heartbeat. I think they all do slightly different things and because I've got them in different colors, they all kind of serve a different purpose in my wardrobe. Honestly, the thing that I really love about these bags is they prove that you do not need to go above and beyond and spend a lot of money to get a really high quality bag that you will have for years. I don't really see the point in spending over a thousand dollars on a designer tote bag as much as I'd love to have a Louis Vuitton Neverfull myself or one of those Saint Laurent shopping totes I just feel like these are so much more better value for money they're going to wear the same they are going to do the exact same thing and they all have minimal or no branding to them so definitely very worthwhile purchases very worthwhile additions to your wardrobe particularly if you need something for day to day that is going to serve you really well and that will transition from work to play anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video i do hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this from me i'll see you guys next time with a brand new one see you soon bye